The other night, I delivered a class titled 21 Seder Secrets for 2021 to a group of young and slightly less young couples with whom I have grown friendly in recent years. One of the very intelligent participants wrote me an email afterwards, conflicted by a particular premise underlying many of the ideas that I shared. The Seder presents a thematically complicated set of rituals. We seem to shift repeatedly and somewhat jarringly between recalling our slavery and past misdeeds on the one hand and experiencing the euphoria of freedom on the other. Even the ritual instruments reflect a duality. Matzah, for example, is simultaneously poor man's bread, or the bread of our affliction, and the food of freedom that we consumed in haste as we absconded Egypt. The same tension is baked into the Haggadah's storytelling process, as we are instructed to begin with the ignoble past and then conclude with the praise. Emotionally, it can all feel a bit disjointing. My inquiring class attendee pushed back. Why all the focus on the negative throughout Jewish history? I question the central role and focus on Jewish oppression, he wrote. Judaism contains a regular cataloging of wrongs and transgressions, which leads to a persistent negative underlying current, whose necessity I question. I found this to be a very sensitive and thoughtful critique, worthy of serious treatment. I would like to share three elements of my response, incorporating input from my Moor colleagues, Rabbis Goldstein and Schoenbrunn, as it deeply relates to the emotional experience of Pesach. The first angle is strictly logical. God created the world clearly with evil, or at least perceived evil, endemic to it. We might question why that is, but Judaism undeniably recognizes and acknowledges its presence. We don't believe in an antichrist. God's complete unity means it all emanates from the same source, which in turn implies a purpose to evil's existence. Some of the great Jewish thinkers and mystics, notably Ramchal, wrote entire works explaining how we can apprehend the light precisely when it is set against a backdrop of darkness. Furthermore, with respect to our own iniquities, George Santayana reminded us long ago that those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Recalling our national transgressions increases the chance that we will avoid replicating them. The second point, noted by Rabbi Schoenbrunn, is experiential. We can again speculate as to why this is, but certainly our lived human experience is such that we do in fact appreciate life differently when confronted with its contrasts. When we go through a difficult ordeal, our sense of elation when it has passed is far greater than anything we normally encounter. Our gratitude is enriched immeasurably by reflecting it against the backdrop of prior misfortune. The third and final approach, emphasized by Rabbi Goldstein, is identitarian. It is a fact of history that we as a people have suffered. Perhaps currently we suffer less, at least physically, but in the broad pantheon of history, anguish has been a recurring and reliable theme. So then, as a modern, comfortable Jew, the question becomes, to what degree do I want to associate or dissociate myself from the pan-generational distress of my people? We would never enter a shiva house and tell a mourner to just get on with life, even though from a purely rational standpoint, that may be the wisest course of action. What use is there in wallowing over a deceased person? But as human beings, we get instinctively that there is reason to hold on. We should not become dominated by sadness, but we should make space for it at appropriate times and in proportionate measure. Our connection to the travails of Jewish history indicates that we perceive ourselves as part of its larger story. All of these approaches coalesce on the Seder night with its multi-hued emotional coloring. We recognize God's great redemption of our people through the prism of our initial burdens. We reenact the story in an effort to viscerally experience an actual sense of salvation. And we attach ourselves to the historical narrative of the Jewish people stretched across time and place. That said, even with this demonstrated need to focus on the quote, catalog of wrongs and transgressions, we still must keep its impact in check. 
An excessive focus on the negative cannot transmit across generations. Consider, for example, the unsustainability of a Jewish identity predicated solely on the Holocaust. Yet insufficient attention to the pain of the past robs us of our vital connection to it and prevents us from both confronting reality and from working to shape it. Somehow, we must grapple to strike a delicate balance. We can find an excellent model for this balanced emotional approach in the Jewish wedding. It is, largely, a thrilling occasion. Yet we temper this bliss just slightly by breaking a glass under the chuppah to acknowledge the world's persisting imperfections. This blended perspective makes the joy far thicker. It also better mirrors reality, enabling authentic celebration that does not devolve into a detached fete of denial. The Hill Sandwich of Korech in the Seder wonderfully captures, in metaphor, the ideal perspective. We take the complicated matzah, insert the bitter herbs, add a dash of sweet charoset, and consume it all while leaning to the left in a demonstration of festive freedom. This mindset is quite COVID-relevant as well. Many people have suffered over the past 13 months, while some, in fact, have discovered great blessings. For others still, life has offered a smattering of both pain and contentment. A korech approach allows us to celebrate life experience gratitude, and express deep empathy all at once. Such is our legacy as Jews. Life is wonderful, invigorating, and complicated. Like much else in Judaism, the Seder asks that we balance distinct and sometimes competing states of mind and being. Its script with surging crescendos and deflating depths pushes us to achieve equilibrium. When all the matzah has been eaten, the wine imbibed, and the story told, we feel a deep and abiding sense of spiritual satisfaction. And yet the very next moment we rise to exclaim L'shana haba b'irushalayim abnuyah next year in a fully rebuilt Jerusalem. We are fulfilled but not content as we yearn for an even brighter future. Shabbat Shalom and Chag Sameach.